Hey YouTube, this is Mike, also known as the Wizard of Odds, and in this video we're going to be talking about the game Cashman Bingo, which you see right here. This game is a good one to have in your bag of tricks if you consider yourself an advantage player, because sometimes it offers a player advantage. And I will talk later in the video about how to identify if it is in a state with a player advantage. But for now, let's just learn about the game as we go. And okay, you see that coin symbol that just landed on the second row from the top, third column? That coin, whenever you get a coin, it's going to float up to the bingo screen above it. So as you can see, again, it landed in the second row, third column, and you can see how it floated up to the same position on that bingo screen above the reels. Now, as soon as the player covers any row, column, or diagonal completely with coins, then he will win all the money on those lines or one line that he just covered. And if that bingo includes the wheel symbol, then he will get a random prize for that square. Now, in general, in this video, I'm going to pan up to that bingo card above the reels only if I covered a new square. If you get a coin in a position that already has a coin on the card, then it will add to the money on that square. So let's keep going. Pause. So you see the free game symbol on reel one and reel five. If the player gets three of those, or more scattered anywhere on the screen, then he will play a free game bonus round. And I'll talk more about that later and show you one. So two coins. And you can see that they both hit fresh squares. That one also hit a fresh square. And that one hit a fresh square. By the way, I am betting a dollar fifty per bet and that dollar no matter how much you bet you get 50 pay lines the choices of the bet amounts are 75 cents a dollar fifty two twenty five three dollars and three seventy five and all of the wins are proportional to the amount that you bet except for the biggest jackpot which I will talk more about later So I started this video with a hundred dollars. You can see I'm already down to $75 and 60 cents. So because I didn't pan up, it means that I had already hit those, that square two games prior. Another fresh square. So those coins would have just added to the existing money in those positions, as well as that 150 in the previous spin. Can I help you? Okay, welcome to Vegas. So that's somebody who approached me at the game, by the way. What? 
I'm sorry? So right now, I'm still trying to cover my card. While we're waiting, let me explain battleship notation, which I keep referring to in this video. In the game Battleship, the rows are labeled with letters and the columns are labeled with numbers, Start, both starting with the upper left. For example, that wild square would be in cell C3, and that 300 that you see right now, that would have been in cell D2. So at this stage of the game where you have several coins on the screen, it seems difficult to cover new squares. It seems most coins that you get cover squares that were already hit. There can be almost no question that the game is gaffed to do that. Everybody who plays this game seems to be in agreement about that, but, not, but they're not in agreement about how exactly the game does it. So this game, in my opinion, is a big money suck in between getting bingos. And you have to hope that when you do finally get a bingo, you recoup everything that you lost since the last bingo. Okay, let me pause for a second. Do you see cell B2 that is now outlined? Yeah, that is because previously I just hit a coin there causing that square to be cased. In fact, let me go backwards a little bit. There, let me go back more. Okay, so you see that coin that landed in cell C2, that 60 cent coin? So that floated up to that position on the bingo card, causing column two to be one away from a bingo. And so I'm now officially cased on cell B2. That is why that frame is now, has a, board, a sparkly border around it on both the card and the playing field. So let's keep going. And a good thing about being cased on column two there is it's going to include the maxi jackpot symbol in cell E2. At the time I started playing this game, the maxi jackpot was at $102.18. Let me say, as long as we're just waiting, that if you're looking for a video of somebody just sitting there playing without a lot of chat chatter, then um, I highly recommend Sarah the Slot Lady. a nice $30 coin. Now you can see that it landed in cell E5. Some people allege that when you get a big coin 
it tends to be in positions that don't help you as much. Oh, there we go. I just hit a coin in cell B2, causing me to bingo on reel two. So let's pause. Everything that's outlined there in reel two, I just won. So starting from the top, I won 390, a dollar 50, 60 cents, 570, 60 cents, and the maxi jackpot, which at the time that this hit was $102.40. So it had grown 22 cents in the time that I played it for a total win of $114.70. And you can see that the maxi jackpot just got reset to $100, which it does on level two at the one at the dollar fifty bet level. So I was fortunate to hit that big one column two with that maxi jackpot, and I think I was a bit lucky to hit it as quickly as I did. When I played the same previously, it seemed to take a lot longer to actually achieve the bingo. Next, let me show you a free spin bonus that I earned in a different game. Recall that you get the bonus if you get three or more free games icons on the screen, like I just did right there. So let me go over the rules. If you get three free spin icons, you get eight free spins. If you get four, then you get 16 free spins. And if you get five icons, then you get 24. So uh, what's special about free spins, you may ask? They work basically the same way as regular spins, except there's always a multiplier in that center square. So not only is it wild, but it's also a multiplier. And the multiplier can either be two, three, five, or 10 times whatever the win is. Of course, it's usually on the low end. And in addition, if you get three or more free, free, excuse me, free spin icons, then you also get a fixed award of two times your bet for three icons, 10 times for four, and 20 times for five. And it seems to me that the free spins have different real stripping that have more coins. About this, I'm not sure, but that's just my impression. So in this particular bonus round, I won $20.40, and that was based on a 75 cent bet. Let me show you guys another feature that happened to me in a different game, and I'm going to just let it happen and then explain it after. All right, what just happened there? Mr. Coin usually sits up there above the bingo board, but once in a while, he's nice enough to jump down to the main screen and throw two or three coins onto the bingo board. And these coins can either hit existing squares or fresh squares. If in my case, he threw a coin at position C1, and A4 to use battleship notation. Both those squares were already covered, so he added to the wins of those squares. The amounts on the coins are random, and that is about it. In the three cards that I played through, I saw this happen only once, and it's just one of these random things that happen in the game. Here is a 
picture of another feature that you rarely see. Sometimes Mr. Coin will come down and award the entire bingo card to the player. There are no bingo requirements. He just comes down and says, you win everything on the screen. And this is what it will look like if that happens. And a friend of mine kindly sent me this picture when it happened to him. In the three games I played through, I never saw it happen. In stories from other people who play this game, I think it's a once in a blue moon kind of thing, but it is definitely worth mentioning. That said, let me go on to the rules of the game. These are the rule screens that you will see if you press rules. And a lot of these I've already discussed, but let me go through them to see if I forgot anything. So this basically talks about the coin feature and how the uh, coins get added to the bingo cards and the range of possible values that the coins might have. And this again goes into the bingo card feature. And of course, feel free to stop the video and read these screens if you wish. This explains how the bingos can be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. And this talks a little bit about the jackpots, and it also mentions the wheel feature. Now, in the three bingos that I played through, none of them went through the center position on the card. But if your bingo does go through the center position, what you will win for that is a wheel will spin and it will stop on a prize. And people say that it usually stops on one of the lower values. I apologize that I didn't get to sh show you an example of this happening in the video, but trust me, it's not that complicated or dramatic. It's just a spinning wheel. Okay, this talks about the jackpots. This game has five jackpots, the minor, the mini, the maxi, the major, and the grand. All of them have certain seed values, and these are the seed values for playing a bet of 75 cents. The mini is $8, the minor is $12, the maxi is $50, the major is $150, and the grand is 8,000. Now, all of these reset values will increase according to how much the player bets. For example, if the player bets 375, which is five times 75 cents, then all those reseed values will be five times as much, except the grand. The grand always starts at $8,000, and that is the same regardless of how much the player bet. Now you might say, whiz, that doesn't seem fair to the players betting more, but I'm sure that Aristocrat has a feature where the probability of hitting that grand is just more if you bet more. So let's go on here. And these, this talks about the maximum values that the jackpots can get. And it says that if a jackpot reaches its maximum value, then the money that would normally be contributed to that jackpot gets contributed to other jackpots. So this says that if the player gets three free game symbols scattered anywhere in the screen, he gets eight free games. If he gets four free game symbols, then he gets 16 free games and five earn 24 free games. And it also talks about how that center square is gets a multiplier of either two, three, five, or 10x. This is the base pay table just what line pays pay and this goes through just the buttons that you need to press to play the game here are the pay lines the as i think i said before the player always gets 50 pay lines there is no choice in that matter and every slot machine in the u.s will say this that if you win twelve hundred dollars or more then the win will be paid by an attendant who will give you a dreaded W2G form so that you may properly pay your taxes on the win. And this doesn't have anything to do with the rules, 
but as I've said before, the player can bet one of five possible amounts, 75 cents, $1.50, 225, $3 or 375. And when the player hits a bingo, the game will always throw out, I think two or three coins just to kind of get the ball rolling. And these will always be one of the jackpots. And they tend to usually be the two lowest jackpots, but you can see right on the game where the coins are for any given bet amount, but it doesn't show you what they are. Now, if the game's not being played, it will kind of go cycle through a, a bunch of stuff sh about the game, and you, you'll have to wait a long time if you want to see in the cycle the coins at all five different bet levels. What I do is I just put in some money, and then you can press what you're looking at right now to see the full screen, including the amounts of the coins. So that said, I think I'm ready for the part that you've probably been waiting for. When is it a good time to jump in and play this game? Hey guys, thanks for making it this far in the video. It is time to try to answer the big question of how can you tell if this game is in a positive state? As I think I said early in the video, this is a good game to know because sometimes it is in a positive state according to the state of the bingo card that the last player left the game in. Most of the time, the vast majority of the game is going to be in a negative state, especially if there are only say two to four marks on the card and none of them being a high value amount. However, sometimes people do leave it in a positive state. What I'm about to say is not a huge secret. There are a lot of advantage players that know about this play. So if a game is left in a positive state, it's probably not gonna stay that way very long. A slot vulture is going to eventually grab it. Now I'm trying to teach you to be a slot vulture to this game. In full disclosure, I've only played through three bingos on this game, but I've studied those games pretty carefully and have some theories how the game works. Now I've discussed these theories on my forum at Wizard of Vegas and other people that play this game have kind of poo-pooed them and my strategy has been criticized, but nobody really seems to know for sure how the game works and exactly what is a good strategy. Practically everybody says, I just go on feel. I know a good board when I see it but I don't like to be that person. I like to be a little bit specific. So I'm gonna give you a strategy. Maybe it's not exactly right, but I think that it's pretty good. So that said, let me show you some examples to explain my strategy. What you're looking at now is the first board that I ever played. This was the state the previous player left it in. And what I think is most important in considering whether to play is how many squares there are where the player is cased, meaning one away from a bingo. In this case, it is just one square in position E1. And I also think you need to look at the amounts that are on those lines where the player is one away. So before I go any further, let me explain that on the line where I'm one away, from cell E1 to A5, you see two mini jackpots. And the mini jackpot at the moment that I sat down was $19.50. If I were to win that diagonal, I would get $19.50 for one of them. And for the second one, I would get the reset value, which is $16 for the level two bet that this board was in, which is $1.50. So let's go ahead and add up those wins on that diagonal where I'm one away. So let's say that the value of cell D2 is gonna get the full mini, and we'll say that the value of the mini jackpot on B4 is going to be the reset value of $16. So the value of D2 is gonna be $19.50 plus 90 cents which equals $20.40. 
for the wheel in the middle, I roughly calculate that to be worth about eight times the amount bet. So $1.50 times eight is $12. For cell B2, you get the reset value of the mini, which is $16 plus $2.70, which is $18.70. And for cell A5, you get $1.80. So the total there is $15.90. Next, what you do is you divide that sum by the bet required. So $52.90 divided by the $1.50 bet is 35.3. Is that playable? I would say not. I draw my line rather arbitrarily at 70. So if that multiple of potential one away wins divided by the bet required is 70 or more, then play. If it's less, then don't play. If it's close to it, like say 60, and you perceive a large value to the points at that casino, then make, make your best judgment call. And also, if I didn't say this, everybody in the comments would say, Wiz, you also have to consider the amounts where you're not one away. For example, there's a nice 3180 win on this screen in cell B2. By all means, make mental adjustments. My 70X strategy is not something that's etched in granite. It is just a starting point for conversation that I'm sure everybody is going to attack in the comments, but how many people are going to actually present a simple strategy that is specific in words in the comments? And I don't think very many people will. So at least give me some credit for going first. And also let me say that, let me remind you that if the player is one away in more than one spot, then you would also add the money in the other lines where the player is one away. For example, if there were say 300 in cell B5, then the player would be one away on column, excuse me, row two. So you would add that 300 plus a mini jackpot, plus 270, plus 60, plus 3180 to the 5290 that I already did for the, um, for, for the diagonal from the Southwest to the Northeast. So I hope you understood that. If you didn't, hopefully rewinding and replaying that part will help. And I plan to make a page on this game on my website at the Wizard of Odds. I'll leave a link to that page in the video description. Who knows, maybe I'll change my strategy in the future, but this is what I got right now on February 10th, 2022. So now let me say a few final words. Hey YouTube, I'm back with some closing remarks. Before I forget, let me say that there's an exception to my 70X strategy if there is a big jackpot on the board. I would say if there's a major or a grand jackpot on the board, then play no matter what. If there is a maxi jackpot, as was the case in the footage at the beginning of this video, then play if the board is already somewhat juiced up with several squares already covered. You don't need to be one away, but use your own judgment there. So that said, I welcome your comments in the comments section below. I expect a lot of criticism about my strategy and the making of this video itself. If you criticize my strategy, go ahead. Um, I would invite you to try to offer your own better strategy, preferably one that is logical in nature and not something that just has a lot of adjectives or something like you just have to feel the board. No, you know, I'm a logical person. I'd like something that can be stated with numbers and procedure. And about the making of this video in general, I expect some people to say, F you wizard for ruining this play. To that, I would say that I'm not the only one who knows about this play. All the slot vultures know about it. The cat is out of the bag. Maybe I'm going to introduce some more competition to you guys, but don't be so selfish. You know, there's plenty of pie out there to go around. And before you 
criticize me. Let me ask you, would you criticize these people? Edward Thorpe, Ken Houston, Lawrence Revere, Bob Dancer, or James Gross Jean. These people all broke new ground in trying to make players win as opposed to lose. I say bravo to these people for using math to help people to understand casino gambling and play better, with preferably with an advantage. That's what I'm trying to do. If you're going to criticize me, do you criticize these people too? too? And if you say yes, then at least you're being consistent. So again, thanks for watching this video and making it to the end. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Better yet, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in another gambling video on YouTube.